Amen. To get your week jump started. I'm excited about what God is doing in our lives here, Victorious Living and in our community, and we thank God for what He's doing in our family. I pray that your resurrection and Easter weekend was powerful and connected with your family and that there was a lot of reflection about the great gift and the victory that Jesus paid and won for us. I'm excited today to also be with you just to thank God for another Sunday to worship Him with the Church of Jesus Christ around the world. I just got off a Zoom uh, meeting at 7 a.m. this morning here in Grove City, but it was 7 p.m. in the Philippines to start our second uh, VLI mentorship program class. We just finished one in uh, another region of the Philippines that I'll be going soon to certify and ordain pastors there as part of our VLI Ministers Network. I want to see God put together a network of pastors around the globe who believe in the victorious gospel of Jesus Christ and who are overcoming and achieving the call of God on their life. And we want to be a partner to them and a partner to help them. Thank you, those of you who partner with us as Victorious Living International Partners. You make all of this possible. Uh, pretty soon I'll be going on a trip, uh, very soon, to the Philippines to, again, see, meet 500 pastors uh, in a region that we've not been in before to open up a new area in preparation for a larger set of meetings and medical outreaches in November of this year. I also will be seeing our 62 mentor graduates and here in the church today we're going to recognize about 12 folks who graduated my first uh, semester sessions of our Victorious Living Mentorship here locally. I'm excited about this part of the ministry uh, finally, believing that this is the time of my life to share the principles, the truths, and the things that God has done in my life to get us to where we are today. We surely don't have all the answers. You know, there is no competition uh, of agendas in the kingdom of God. Pastor Brent pastors our church here. I come from out, out of this church, uh, give covering to it, but I go out of it as a, as a global missionary. Uh, but we have no competing interest or agendas. We are on the same team. Same with every other pastor in our city who's preaching the gospel and ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are on the same side. And if you're listening today, know that there's no competition uh, here for you um, to have to just come to our ministry. There's many great churches in central Ohio. Uh, but today I want to talk about something that's been on my heart all week. And I tried to share it in the in a short and a real and it never <laughs> couldn't get it mixed right it didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out so I'm going to share it this morning um, I'm of the era that you know I guess I, I, I kind of like war movies and uh, historical movies uh, the old westerns things like that there was a movie came out a couple of years ago about World War One called 1917 1917 it was a very powerful film it was a film shot from a, looked as it was a continual shot from beginning to end following two young soldiers, two young British soldiers. As they're running through the countryside, they've been given the charge by their commander to take orders or information to the front lines. Upon their way, they encounter all kinds of treacherous moments. One in particular stuck out to me and is about, uh, gives an illustration about what I want to talk about this morning for just a few minutes, about giving no mercy to the devil. No mercy to the devil. In this scene, these two soldiers are running across the countryside and there are biplanes fighting uh, in the air. One of the biplanes gets hit by gunfire, begins to smoke, and begins to crash. As it's coming to the ground, it's obvious it's headed right for these two young men and where they're standing watching this dogfight. They run out of the way. The crash happens just yards behind them. And as the crash explodes into flames, it's a German uh, biplane. It's the enemy. And uh, they, will, they instantly, out of just reaction, pull the pilot to safety from the burning plane. He's badly injured. And uh, one of them that says, hey, let's put him out of his misery. He's, he's injured. Let's put him out of his misery. The other one says, no, he needs a drink of water. Go get him some water. And as the one partner goes to get water, the other young soldier who's attending to the injured German enemy pilot gets stabbed in the gut because this German pilot is going to take one of them down with him. And he dies on the spot. Horrible ending to that scene. But the reality is it reminds me that there is no room for mercy and compromise 
when it comes to the devil and that the enemy likes to prey upon our merciful side, to prey upon our side of, well, a little bit of compromise won't hurt in this area of my life. You know, the Bible's very clear about this in James chapter 4 and verse 7, where the Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God and resist. That word resist means to fight off, to wrestle away. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You see, the devil doesn't care about you or I, about whether or not we suffer. Matter of fact, he finds great delight in causing us to be deceived, in causing us to not walk in all the promises and blessings of the Lord, causing us to accept secular, worldly ideas that will lead to our destruction. The Bible says the enemy is out to steal, to kill, and to destroy, John 10.10. 10. But James 5, 4, 7 is very clear. Submit yourselves therefore to God and resist the devil. We need to not give the devil any quarter, as it used to be said. No mercy, no leeway, no compromise. The devil doesn't care if your children die young by suicide. The devil doesn't care if your children become addicted to drugs or become victims of sex trafficking. The devil doesn't care if your husband becomes addicted to pornography and it divides your marriage. The, the enemy doesn't care if you get sick and, and, and die. He doesn't care if you wrestle with anxiety. He delights in these things and he, he stokes the flames of opportunity. The Bible also says in uh, Ephesians 4.27, do not give the devil any foothold Another translation says, do not give the devil an opportunity. When we compromise with him in sinfulness as Christians, we, we disregard the word of God and do things our way, we open doors into our life for the enemy to come in and wreak havoc and confusion, to breed corruption and stealing, our, stealing and killing and destroying who we are and who God made us to be. Just like that German pilot the enemy will not go away without trying to take somebody with him. And not unlike that young British soldier who had pity on that German pilot, many of us will suffer as a casualty because we, we desi decided not to put a no mercy law rule or practice against the devil. We'll let him in. We'll let him come in in some way, shape, or form by our own compromise by our own uh, neglect of prayerful uh, spiritual warfare. We have modern day Christianity that is based upon our feelings, upon trying to achieve some sort of inner happiness instead of looking at the Bible and following the word of God and following Jesus Christ as the only way, the only truth and the only life. I know the devil's attacking people. I see it all the time. It breaks my heart to watch people who know God get offended with the church because of a decision a pastor might make and allow a fence to come in where the devil uses that door to get in and wreak havoc in the spiritual life of that person and eventually in the physical life of that person. I, I get tired of watching the enemy come on people who are committed to God but then decide, well, I'd rather do this on weekends. I'd rather do this than read the Bible. I'd rather do this than go to church. I, God would want me to be happy in my camper every weekend instead of being in the house of God worshiping with a bunch of hypocrite Christians. That's how people talk and think about the whole self-justification of doing what we want to do versus what He wants to do. Nothing wrong with camping. <laughs> Nothing wrong with going on vacation. Nothing wrong with playing some golf. Nothing wrong with these things if they are balanced to the point to where they do not allow the devil an opportunity because we've let down our defenses, we've stopped uh, uh, actively devoting ourselves to Jesus Christ and His church and His work. I know words like devotion, uh, words like discipline, words like dedication, words like commitment are not well accepted in any way today. No one wants to be committed, they don't want to be disciplined. They don't want to be devoted. But God demands all these things from us. And when we do not walk in these, we allow the devil a foothold in our life. 
that little bit of pornography guy, that's going to hurt you. That little bit of compromise in the area of alcohol or drugs, it might just come back to get you in a bad way. That little bit of compromise in holding bitterness against a person will grow into a big fever pitch of hatred and bitterness that will blind you from everything else. I'm not saying life is easy, and I'm not saying that the devil is, is the easiest thing to fight off. But I am going to tell you that the Bible says that we are victorious. But we have to take on the battle. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, or yes, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rules of darkness in high places. Therefore, having done all to stand, stand fast, putting on the armor of God. You see, we have to engage the spiritual battle that we are in. My battle is not with the transgenders, the homosexuals. My battle is not with the gambling empires. My battle is not with the liquor industry. My battle is not with a Democrat or a Republican. My battle is with a demon and a devil from hell bent on destroying my life as a child of God. Doesn't have to go after everybody he's already got bound in sin. He's coming after the believer and his family. You see, the devil knows if he can get to our kids, if he can get to our loved ones, he can get to us. But I demand that a shield of protection be put up around my home, my family, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. I declare in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I declare in the name of Jesus, greater is he that's in us and he that's in the world. And we are more than conquerors. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Neither height nor depth, nor thing to come, nor thing present, nor angels, nor principalities, nor any other such thing shall separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can have a victorious week, but you need to stop compromising with the devil. Don't put up with his little tricks. Oh, he might be like that German pilot in 1917, the film, crashing that plane, it's calling out for you to have mercy on him. And when it comes to the devil, let him burn. When it comes to the enemy, take no quarter. We as Christians must stand fast and strong. We cannot allow the enemy even one step into our door. I won't even open the door to him. He can stand outside and knock, and I'm going to run him off my lawn in Jesus' name. I, I, I wake up every day with the awareness that I am in a battle. And it's a battle that Jesus won by what we just celebrated, the resurrection. But I've got to enforce the victory that he won in my life and in my time. I don't have to win it, but I have to enforce it. And the way I enforce it is, I do not fraternize nor give mercy to the enemy. The devil and his demons, they don't have any part in my life. And any person that brings that demon near my family, I don't want them in my life either until they're delivered. I'm sorry. There has to be a standard set by men and women of God over their homes. I'm a priest and protector of my house. That's my lineage too. That's my children and my grandchildren. Oh, I don't have full direct command over my grown, grown adult children, but you better believe I have spiritual authority and I stand in it and I fight for them. I intercede for them and I believe God to not only protect me, my wife, but all of them as well. You can let the battle go on around you, but that enemy's going to pop out of that wreckage and he's going to try to take you down with him. Don't let him do it. Hey, join me today at 1045 Live. I am preaching today. It's Global Sunday. Pastor Brent's uh, keeping me in the loop as far as the team preaching goes here, and I love it. I got a message today I think will be a blessing to you called Aftershocks. What happened after the resurrection? What aftershocks came into the life of the believers? And what is Jesus expecting out of us in light of the fact that he defeated death, hell, and the grave? I'm going to share that this morning. You don't want to miss it. 1045, watch us live right here on Victorious Living. Uh, or come and see us in person if you're nearby. you got an hour to get here. You've got plenty of time. God bless you. I love you much. Have a great week. And remember these words from 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Every time.